so um, in looking at question 4.1, uh, they give us a solution of lithium-2 sulfate in water. So which of these would uh, most appropriately show the um, solution? Which of the three drawings? A, B, or C? C. C. Why C? Exactly, right? Yeah, so we want both. Because uh, both B and C show complete ionization, but um, based on the Li2SO4, there are going to be twice the number of lithium ions as sulfate ions. So uh, C is a better representation of the two. All right, let's look at 4.3. So 4.3, they give us, um, again, three aqueous solutions, three different substances. Um, AX, AY, AZ, represented by the diagrams there. One is a strong electrolyte, one is a weak electrolyte, and one is a non-electrolyte. So which one would be the strong electrolyte? C. C, okay, and why C? Complete ionization. Complete ionization, all right. Which is the weak electrolyte? B. B, right, because it's partial. partial ionization. And what would be the non-electrolyte? A. Excellent, right, and that's because there's no ionization. So... Just simple stuff like that. There, you know, there's going to be uh, representations on the um, AP exam as well, uh, so might as well get used to to seeing that um, those representations. All right, so let's move on to um, 4.5. Okay, so we're going to do 4.5, where it gives you three white solids A, B, and C, and it asks you to um, determine uh, which one is A, which one is B, and which one is C. All right, ready to discuss? Okay, so again, they tell us the first one, A, dissolves in water to form a conducting solution. B, is not soluble in water. And C, dissolves in water to form a non-conducting solution. So uh, what would be the uh, dissolves in water to produce a conducting solution? NaOH. Right? Yep, NaOH, right? Um, what is not soluble in water? Silver bromide. Okay. And soluble in water but forming a non-conducting solution? Glucose, because that's a molecular compound. Excellent. Well, doesn't it dissolve because of the polarity? It dissolves because of the polarity of the, the water molecules. Yeah. NaOH, is that an electrolyte? Strong electrolyte? Uh, NaOH is a strong electrolyte, yep. Because... Um, Right. Strong, so strong base and strong base. So yeah. So the only the only weak base that you really will see um, is ammonia that I can think of that you'll come across. NH three. So that's the weak. That's a weak base. Uh, and again, if you know the when it comes, so if it contains a metal, all right. If it contains an, I should specify an alkali metal. You know it's going to be a strong electrolyte. Okay, typically, if it's soluble, and, and again, they will, they're, they're not beyond what we've discussed multiple times in terms of solubility. They have to be alkali metals, ammonium, or uh, nitrate. Uh, if they tell you it's soluble, 
right, and it contains a metal, then it's going to be a strong electrolyte. Okay, the only really the only weak electrolytes you're going to get into are weak acids, um, or potentially a molecular compound like glucose. Or is that what they gave us? Glucose. Yeah. yeah. So a molecular compound is going to be a non-electrolyte, but still dissolves. All right. Why don't we move on to four point two three? This gets into a little more solubility, but sticks to the if you stick to the basic solubility rules, you should be able to answer these questions. Uh, So um, just as you're you're kind of working through these, um, anytime we give you a problem like this, and again, as soon as you see aqueous, you know that the uh, solutions they gave you are soluble. Okay, so there's no question about solubility for the original solutions. So now it's just a matter of, and in this case, you know that a reaction is going to happen. So in order for a reaction to occur, or for there to be evidence of a reaction, you have to have a precipitate. So basically we're looking at what is forming a precipitate and what's not. And you, again, you base the precipitates off of whether or not they meet the solubility rules. So if you think about these, each of these are basically double displacement reactions or double replacement reactions. Um, or, uh, so you're just looking at when, it, when it, they switch places, which of the compounds has soluble products to it and therefore whatever is in that compound is going to be soluble. So uh, when we mix sodium carbonate and magnesium sulfate, what are going to be the spectator ions? Sodium and sulfate, right? Sodium and sulfate will be the spectator ions for A. Uh, when we mix lead 2 nitrate and sodium sulfide, what are going to be the spectator ions? Nitrate and sodium, yep. And when we mix uh, ammonium phosphate, ammonium phosphate, and calcium chloride, what are going to be the spectator ions? Ammonium and uh, chlorine. Right. In that case, it's going to be ammonium and chlorine. Yep. So it's okay. Ammonium ammonium's always soluble. Nitrates and your um, alkali metals. All right. Um, so what would be the net ion equation for those? For which one? For just that one. For actually more, more so for two. For the second one? The net ionic would be um, lead ions. So PB ions plus... Do you need to have two though? That's my question. Well, no, so so what you need to think about is what's going to be the charge. What's the charge on lead? Two positive. Two positive. What's the charge on sulfur? Two minus. Two minus. So it's in a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. Just, just because it was PB and 3 2 but no. Yeah, no, the, what will happen is the even though technically the nitrates and um, sodiums are, are 
don't form a compound, they're still in a two to two ratio. Okay. So their ratios are fine. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Other questions on that one? All right. So uh, let's look at um, 430. So question 430. All right, ready to look at that? Uh, so which is most basic, right? So basically, um, basically, we're looking to figure out um, what would, what, first of all, what would make something most basic? My, the the uh, concentration of hydroxide ions, right? So the higher the concentration of hydroxide ions, the, the more basic it would be. So based off of that, um, what what's going to be what will produce the highest concentration of hydroxide ions? What do you think on that? Yeah, so one second. Sorry. C. So why? Why C? Because there's two hydroxides. Okay. But what about, what do we also have to be concerned about? Molarity. Molarity. So how does that count? Why does he ask a, ask a question and then walk away? <laughs> Did people account for molarity? Does that make, how does that affect things? Well, the highest so concentration of like base particles. Okay, um, so first, the first thing we can do, right, in terms of most basic, is what can we say about ammonia? That, not that it's, it's a weak base. It is a weak base, right? So, so in the grand scheme of things, we don't have to worry about ammonia, even though ammonia is in a higher concentration, right? So that's the first thing. Uh, and then if we look at the other two, um, if we calculate out the moles of hydroxide formed, um, 0 0.150 molar solution, and we're given, um, oh, well, we're not given specific amounts, but based on molarity, right, that would produce, if we had 100 milliliters, it would produce uh, 0.15 moles of OH. And the barium hydroxide, right, because there's two hydroxides, it would produce uh, 0 0.2 moles of OH, right? So is that, that, does that everyone make sense to people? So, it'd be C. so the answer is C, right? So yeah. Basically 